Once again, I want to welcome you to focus on Liberia. This is uh, the business discussion. We call this FOL Marketplace. This is where we discuss business, economics, and finance. I have with me my co-host, Mr. William Thomas Kane. William is uh, my co-host. He's a real estate. He called himself the avid real estate entrepreneur. William, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all our listeners and viewers who are joining us. We want to also welcome Mr. Boakai Mame. Boakai, welcome to Focus on Liberia. That's our guest, another real estate guru. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Last but not the least, Mr. Blige Ines. Blige, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Thank you. Before I, uh, we go into it, we want to welcome our viewers from across the globe. I will go back to William, who's going to uh, read our disclaimer, and then we go into the introduction of our guest. William, is all yours. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. And, uh, you know, we're going to, as business people, we're going we're gonna to try to be punctual and move this thing forward. So just a disclaimer, the content is for informational purpose only. You should not construe any such information or other material as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. Nothing contained on our media or written documents constitute a solicitation, recommendation, endorsement, or offer by Focus on Liberia, any third-party service provider to buy or sell any securities, other financial instruments in this or in any other jurisdiction in which such media material may be shared. All content on this site is information of a general nature and does not address the circumstances or any particular individual entity. Nothing in the media constitutes professional or financial advice, nor does any information on the platform constitute a comprehensive or complete statement of the matters discussed or the law relating thereto. Thank you, there you have it. That is our disclaimer. Another thing I want to just remind uh, those uh, our, our um, guests that uh, we are doing, we're using this Zoom and the Facebook and we're streaming. And so if you have to get up and do anything, please do not switch your screen or anything. Just leave it as is. Because right now with the COVID-19, everything going on, there's a high usage and the system uh, may have a little glitch and we want to avoid that. Dennis, back to you. Thank you, thank you, William. Okay, let me bring on my guest, Mr. Blige Ines. Blige is a business developer and uh, is the owner of the Tribe Buchanan Development Corporation. Blige, please uh, say a little bit about yourself. Let my viewers know who Blige is. Okay, thank you again for you having me on the show. It's an honor and a pleasure to, to join you guys on this amazing platform that you built. Um, as you said, my name is Blige. Uh, Bazo people say Blige. Uh, Blige Ennis uh, means for the sake of my home or for my home sake in, uh, in Basa. So I was born in born in Liberia, left when I was six years old during the war in, uh, in 1996. And my family, I briefly fled to Sierra Leone and uh, from Sierra Leone came to the U.S. where I, uh, I studied international business and undergrad at the University of Massachusetts. And I uh, later got my master's from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. And uh, I've been working in the real estate industry on the development and finance side for the last seven to eight years. Um, I was working in the commercial real estate development space in Washington, D.C. prior to, uh, to joining my partners and starting uh, Tribe Buchanan Development. So... Uh, Tribe Buchanan Development is a construction company, and we are based and headquartered in Liberia, and we also have a U.S.-based office as well, and we are focused on uh, general construction services. We're a design-build firm, so we do everything from architecture to actual construction to, uh, to project management and engineering as well. And, um, and apart from Tribe Buchanan, um, I also run a U.S.-based company called Akimba Investment Group. As a real estate development and investment firm that's focused on raising uh, investment capital to deploy in emerging African markets. So um, that's a, a brief background on myself, and I look forward to sharing a little bit more as we go through the conversation. Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Blige in this. Did I pronounce it right the Basa way? Oh, you said it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Now we'll go to Mr. Waka Mame. He's the CEO and sole developer of Kaikana. Yes, sir. 
Uh, so again, I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Bwakai Mame. Uh, I was born and raised in Liberia. I went to school um, at Riggs, Riggs Institute uh, in Broville. And in 2010, I got a scholarship and, and moved to the US to study. I study uh, information technology and then worked for a year in the US before moved back to Liberia. And I was working in Liberia as the IT manager for the tech role. Um, that's where I started, thought about starting a real estate company. Uh, so I started uh, Kaikana and we've got some people working in Liberia and um, some people working in the U.S. Um, since I moved back to the U.S. in 2016, I've been working as a software engineer. I currently work for McKinsey and Company, a consulting company, but uh, I, I try to get on projects that are mostly real estate because that's my interest and that's what I like to do. I like to learn more about. So I, I look forward to just going through the show and kind of sharing about Liberia. I'm very passionate about Liberia and, you know, the development in Liberia and stuff like that. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you. And what is Kaikana? Kaikana is a real estate company uh, that helps you to buy or sell real estate properties in Liberia. It can be commercial or residential real estate. And what does that mean? Is that a Liberian word? That means if you want to rent your a house or you want to buy land, you can call our number or you can go to the office uh, on 17th Street, Syncor, and somebody will help you to find a place to buy or find a house to rent. Thank you, gentlemen, and welcome again to Focus on Liberia. This is our everywhere marketplace. And uh, I'll throw it back to my co-host, Mr. William King, who's going to begin the interview. William. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we have two individuals with very uh, uh, interesting and extensive background. Uh, just want to give a, a little background. So when we talk about the real estate industry, um, it can it has a very wide spectrum. Uh, we, you can look at the residential, which in and of itself, uh, there can be development, there can be appraisal, the marketing, selling, leasing, management. Uh, just in the in the residential space, whether it's a, it's a single family home or like a duplex, uh, two units apartment, triplex, quadplex, and so forth. And it goes on and on and on and on. So for the purpose of this discussion and everything, uh, we'll be focusing on the uh, residential side. How are things going in Liberia? That's what we want to talk about with the mm -hmm. economy, the way it is, and so forth. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first... Um, uh, look to uh, Bokai and, and I'm asking, hey, uh, how are things looking? We noticed that there were some high end uh, uh, rentals. Uh, so uh, we want to know from your end, what does it look like uh, right now with everything that's going on and the economy a little bit slow in Liberia? Are those things moving? Uh, interesting question. I think it's clear uh, from the books and, and, and the traction we've been getting lately that it's not going very well in Liberia. I think even before the pandemic, uh, we had uh, expats living from Liberia. And I really think expats uh, are one of the group of people that um, invest heavily in real estate in Liberia, especially for the residential side. Um, so I, th I think for the fact that UN and some expats were leaving Liberia even before the pandemic. And then now that it's happened, more people are leaving. So I think business is very slow. Most people that are looking to move or buy are kind of staying put. So it's just very few people calling every now and then to ask about uh, properties to buy and maybe and mostly land. But I think right now it's very, very slow, especially with the pandemic. There's, there's not much going on. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. So, so, so are you saying that uh, the leases that we see uh, right now, there are some leases uh, on your side or just in general in Liberia for $2,000, for $2,500, for, for uh, $1,000, $1,500. I mean, uh, in Liberia, uh, uh, clearly, um, this is not for the ordinary Liberian. Am I mistaking the or, or is the income at that at that level? 
No, uh, so I, I think you're right there. Um, it, I would just put out a disclosure that we don't set the price for the properties on our website or that we advertise. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with the property owners to, to determine the price we suggest to them, but they ultimately have a say on what the price should be for their property. And clearly, okay. uh, with a price range of $2,000, $1,500 to $3,000, even up to six, seven hundred, uh, seven thousand dollars. It's rare that you will find a Liberian leasing a property like that. So heavily on the on the commercial on the residential side, um, mm -hmm. expats or organizations in Liberia uh, that have their employees there are the ones that, that are actually bringing in the the money for 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 rentals uh, yeah. in that type of price range. But obviously, there are mm -hmm. Liberians who will pay Three hundred dollars to five hundred dollars to to rent an apartment, but even that, it's still very difficult right now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Blige. Uh, someone from your background that have done, um, you know, uh, working in the commercial space, of course, um, development space, looking at some uh, numbers and everything. Uh, based on some of the numbers uh, that that you see come out of Liberia. Um, what is it looking like on your end in terms of how do you approach the, the uh, analysis? Is there something there? I mean, as a, as, as a developer, uh, one of the things when I transitioned to the Liberian market and, and told myself that I wanted to go back and work in Liberia, a big premise of that was actually was, was what a lot of what Borkat does is, is gathering data and understanding the climate of the market. Um, you know, for example, when we were working with investors and looking to develop somewhere here in the U.S., our investors wanted to know what were some of the driving factors that would, would drive the market and make sure that their investment was successful. And in Liberia, for instance, they mentioned that um, with the withdrawal of the U.N. from Liberia, that hurt just the market as a whole, not just the residential market. It hurt the commercial market and the, the flow of capital that was in that market. And, um, and one of the things that as a developer that we realized that it was, it was more successful, it was a better idea to invest in, in commercial rather than residential in Liberia in the short term. As you see- can you, uh, can, can you slow it down for a second? When you say commercial, are you talking about, for example, maybe shops at the bottom and then apartments at the top or just strictly commercial offices? Can you elaborate a little bit? Okay, so, so for my analysis, um, when I'm speaking on commercial, I'm speaking primarily on office space. And, okay. uh, and, and one of the, the reasons that kind of drove, uh, the primary reasons that drove that analysis, um, we had a potential project that we were looking at of doing a development in Liberia. And at the time we were considering residential because um, the market was, was at a peak at that time. And this was when the UN was still very busy in Liberia. But then we realized that uh, it was a very, very small segment of the population that was carrying that high rental rate. And we realized that if, if something goes wrong in a market, it's easy for people to negate on their rent and say, oh, I can't pay my rent and, you know, and walk away from that lease versus commercial office space where corporations are coming in Liberia and they're invested in the market for, you know, five year uh, spans or 10 year spans. And when you look at it, you have companies like Chevron, for example, that were renting uh, renting apartment buildings or, rent, or renting uh, residential buildings because they're wearing ample or quality office spaces that were on the market. So um, as developers, we knew that if we wanted to come into the market or if an investor wanted to come in and develop in the market, um, looking at higher end or quality commercial office was a better play immediately than, than residential was. Got it. Got it. Understand me. Now, but I see here... From any one of you, I'm gonna play devil advocate here. I'm gonna say, hey, you never, you never for once in everything that you did, you never looked at your own family member here in the diaspora who always sending money back home. Do you think that 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 they wanted something? <laughs> um, I mean, I would say yeah, it's a good point. People, people from here would want something back in Liberia, and I think they they also. A big part of the cash flow that come into the real estate market uh, in terms of residential. So, so yeah, they, they, we, we do think about them. For, from my perspective, 
again, there's not really much I can do. I can help them to find the right property, to, to go to the right property owners that, you know, will be able to help them with the price range that they have. One thing we do is ask for our customers budget and where they look looking to rent. So based on that information, we go and, you know, find something that might work for them. So, you know, and I, and I think it's getting better for, for those people because as UN is pulling out and some expats are pulling out, if you come in now in a place that, you know, that will usually sell to an expat for $2,500, you can probably get that for $1,000 or $800 a month, you know, and living in a place that, you know, will have everything that you need. So hmm. I think as it's getting bad in one aspect, especially with the UN moving, it's getting a little better for people that are, you know, looking to go back to Liberia, you know, returning from the U.S. or other places like that. Okay, so so I mean I mean interpreting this, what you're saying is that uh, right now at the moment, well, let me take a step back. So um, there was a certain point in time during uh, President Sirleaf office administration, there was a lot of NGOs, UN, and so forth, and so the rental market was was very hot, and uh, there wasn't a lot of space. Uh, typically for the ordinary Liberians or maybe Liberians in the diaspora who when they went home or so forth could find something, you know, a little bit in their um, price price uh, range. So now we see this shift where things have slowed tremendously uh, with real estate. Should we, is this a time to just pause or is this a time to reassess, reevaluate and see another strategy and are, can the typical Liberian take a grasp of, of this strategy? Is it something like, hey, can we uh, now go in and start buying, picking up stuff at a at a good price? I'm talking more from it? the ownership side, or is it that people don't sell? Well, hold on, say, hold, hold, hold on, Buckeye, let me ask BJ that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say, I think in every, every down market, there's an opportunity, right? So whether it's the US, whether it's Liberia, um, for someone who um, is, is adventurous, for someone who's an investor and looking for opportunity, um, as Borkai said, that the um, you know the decline in the market economically has created opportunities for people to be able to afford things that um, that were probably overpriced uh, prior and before. I think in in looking at that as well too, it's very very important for us to be able to look at the climate of of the different areas of Liberia, right? Because you know, when you look at Sinkor, Mama Point, those are the two areas where um, are, are probably the most planned communities, um, the, the safest communities and the most planned communities in Liberia. So everyone's looking for stability. So if you're looking to buy as an investor, you're looking to say, where can I buy a property? I want to be able to properly rent or whatever uh, to be able to get a return on my investment back quick enough uh, versus you getting something all the way out in Brewerville um, it's going to be harder to get the price range that you want from a rental perspective at that time. But again, if you're focused on a long-term investment strategy, I think it makes more sense right now. It's a buyer's market because everyone's looking to, to sell. Everyone's looking for cash. So if you have a longer-term strategy, I think the market works for you now versus thinking that you're going to win right away. Well, okay, let's talk I, about I think, competition. I think you guys hit it already because I was about to ask for the, the major challenges when it comes to building and the construction of real estate in Liberia. You, you talk bits and pieces about that, but generally, what are this, those challenges? Bleejay, you want to take that? Yeah, from, uh, from a construction standpoint, um, I mean, when, when it comes to the enforcement of, of zoning codes, um, it's, it's very, very important in, in Liberia. I think um, there is no real structure when it comes to the construction industry in Liberia, especially when it comes to the residential side. Um, of course, you know, as a developer, when you have architectural plans, whether it's, it's residential or commercial, you're supposed to file it with public works. Public works is supposed to approve and make sure that you're building within the boundaries of the, of the set codes. But, you know, Liberia is a free for all right now. Anybody can get up and do anything, no matter what the design looks like. People are building in the alleys and these different things. So I think for a company like myself, where I, I, I come from, you know, from doing this type of work in the U.S. where there's structure and the system to construction and wanting to bring that same type of quality to Liberia is difficult because people aren't accustomed to it and people aren't used to it. So um, there's, a, there's a point in having to educate people on, on teaching them 
how things are supposed to be done if we want to move Liberia from a construction standpoint into a more orderly or, or a more sustainable uh, a future for development. So that's, that's one of many challenges, um, you know, when it comes to, to construction. Black guy was smiling there. Black guy, you can add. <laughs> yeah, just quick reaction to that. I think in addition to, uh, to the challenges you just mentioned, infrastructure is one big one. Uh, infrastructure and the, the workforce, the quality of work that we, we see, you know, is not that great. And if you need uh, companies to come from out and build, especially on the commercial side, you will, you will need infrastructure, you will need uh, running water, you will need electricity, you will need all of those things. So if you don't have those, it's a huge challenge. People will have to come up and set up their own generator and set up their own stuff. And it makes it difficult. It makes it difficult to convince investors to come in to, to build to you know put in the work so um i think just typical liberian things you know infrastructure water electricity if, if those things are better i think we will see uh, an increase in uh, investment in commercial real estate in liberia hmm. that Thank leads you. me to uh, you know policy wise what are what policies could the government put in place to help create that kind of conducive environment i mean i, I think <laughs> I think urban planning is, uh, is is very important. I think, um, you know, one, you know, this is this is connected with infrastructure and everything that Borka just said as well. I think the government needs to have set plans and urban development plans for different communities in Liberia, um, and and a plan for vision of how they want these communities to look five, ten, fifteen, twenty years from now. Um, and with with this urban planning, this brings structure of saying you can't just build any type of property in this particular place. There's, there's a restriction or there's a code that you're supposed to go by. Um, the utilities and the infrastructure that's supposed to, to assist in the development of those communities need to be put in, in the public works planning and the vision planning of a lot of these communities and, you know, and, and the future cities of Liberia. So um, at, at bare minimum, there absolutely just needs to be some type of a vision plan put in place from an urban planning perspective. And then outside of that, um, it's, it's a it's a commitment again to to setting the foundation to make an investor uh, have the need and want to know that they're not going to lose their investment when they come in again as Borka said when it comes to basic things like electricity when it comes to infrastructure and the challenges that you're going to face uh, when you put your investment somewhere. Yeah, and before Borka comes in, let me throw in another piece there about uh, the land disputes. Since the end of the war, there have been a lot of land disputes. So. Even if I'm, you know, wanting to buy, get a piece of land, I'm afraid that, uh, hey, is it going to be mine two, three years from now? Or someone going to come and fight me for it? So what, what, what can you do or what can be done to ensure that uh, buyers have confidence in the properties you're selling to them or even the piece of land? Is that question posed to me? Yes. You, you uh, know, I'm just throwing that in on, on top of what I asked Bleach earlier. Okay, so first reaction to the question yeah, you asked. Okay. Uh, first reaction to that is, I, I think one thing that needs to happen with the government is not just planning, right, and putting out the policies. I think enforcing those policies uh, will be very important. You know, in Liberia, uh, before you build anything uh, in any planned city, you're supposed to go and get a permit. But obviously in Liberia, you know, that's not going to work. Anybody can, like you like, uh, just said, anybody can just go and get anything from anywhere and build anything. People build in the alley, on the road, anywhere. And, and you know, and, and then they try to fight the government for, you know, trying to break it down, something like that, right? Yeah. So there needs to be a way to enforce uh, some of those policies. But with corruption, I know we're not talking about politics, but with mm -hmm. corruption, it's just very difficult to, you know, to do something like that. Uh, same, same corruption plays into the land disputes. Uh, somebody will, will have, you know, buy a land and then three months later you hear that it's sold to somebody else. I think a part of the reason is, again, infrastructure. Like, in terms of uh, technology, I, I think technology can help to manage that. We need to have a system or a database where we know all of the properties, who they belong to. Somebody can go online and search it and know that this property belongs to this person and that way you know that you're not supposed to buy it. Um, but that is a huge challenge for a real estate company like mine. And um, the way we try to go around that is uh, basically doing some form of verification, uh, asking people in the community, hey, this person said they have the land, it's really for them. 
you know, water map. Obviously, you can't really trust that. We look at the deed. Uh, we also go to uh, the Ministry of Public Work, uh, Lands and Mines and try to look at the deed. You know, we do those kind of things. But then again, down to the core, it's corruption because somebody can go and pay somebody, can forge the deed, can do something and say, oh, this is right. And then three days later, somebody could come and say, hey, the land that is sold to you, it's my uncle's land and my uncle is not happy with it. So you have to buy it from me as well. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's very difficult. That's a real challenge in Liberia. And for that to be solved, we need the infrastructure. We need, we need computer systems. We need technology. We need applications that can actually track and, and say, you know, something where we can track and say, this plot of land in XYZ with a number belongs to this person. And everybody knows it, everybody sees it, it can change. So if you see that and you buy it, then it's your fault. But if there's no regulation, there's no way to see that, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much. Dennis, go ahead. You wanted to, to no, chime ahead. in with something? Well, no, what ahead. I wanted to do um, is, uh, I want to read a few comments from our uh, viewers. Okay, uh, this one is from Louis Lope Caesar. He says, I have about two apartments that are unoccupied as I speak. Then from Tony K. Davis, he said, Patience Bowie, tell me about dreaming big when I just lost $70,000 in the freaking country. Patience wow. Bowie said, I understand and have been there. Then it said, my mean man, Blige, I told you just before you left. <laughs> uh, uh, don't be there, leave, no leadership, so, so crooks. So uh, another one said, uh, hippie, sissy, hippie said, this is a very good discussion. So what I wanna do, uh, gentlemen, as uh, you guys know, through the Ministry of Lands and Mines, there was a program that where they were trying to, to bring the uh, the uh, department with the archives and these online. I'm not showing the uh, progress on um, on um, that, but let's 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 talk about buying. Once the yeah. once the person gets over a lot of those hurdles, well, he does one of the things. Go ahead. Before you go there, I want them to respond to uh, Cecilia Hippie's question here. Are uh, some of you guys living in Liberia? I think we. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I can go. Uh, I, I think people uh, tend to think if you are not in Liberia, you can make an impact in Liberia. That's not true. I was born and raised in Liberia. I moved out in 2010. Obviously, I went back and I worked uh, at Lipteco for almost uh, two years, and I have all my family there. So I, I, I try to go back to Liberia at least once every year. I have a house there. You know, I have a property there. My family is there. Uh, so I would say I go back and forth to Liberia, but I don't live in Liberia right now. But how's your site managed? I think that's one of the questions they want to ask. Tell us a little bit about the management team you have there. So in Liberia, I, obviously I have a, a manager that is working in the office and I have a couple of people working in the office. Um, I have, again, like I say, I have my family there. Uh, it's more like a family business. I have my sister who you know works in, in, in Liberia. She oversees some of the stuff, but ultimately I have a manager that runs the office. Okay. How are how are pictures and stuff loaded? How do you keep your site up to date, loaded a little bit? I so, do some of the work. So uh, a lot of the, uh, we have an intern that's working. I usually will uh, oversee the listings. You can either reach out to us and give us a call or go to kaikano.com. There is a site that's a link to list your property. You click that, you, you know, add some information, you upload photos and that will, when you send that information, is going. we're going to get a notification that somebody is trying to list something on our website. It will get into a state of pending. Obviously, we'll review it. We'll get in contact with you. If it's for sale, we'll try to get some information to make sure that the property you're trying to sell is legitimate. Um, and then we tell you about our process, then we list it. Uh, but you can also give us a call. We send people out sometimes to get pictures and actually go and look at the property and verify it. Because some people will say, this is all that we have and it's not really right. It's not accurate. So if we do verify our properties is listed as verified, that means somebody from our company went there, looked at it and knew that, you know, it's the property we're looking at. So that's kind of how it works. Blige, you want to uh, chime in on that question too from Cecilia? Yeah, so I, um, I, I transitioned back to Liberia uh, about a year ago where I'm, I'm based there uh, majority of the time. So I'm on ground um, about three, three to four months at a time. and. Uh, and then I come back to the U.S. 
um, you know, and obviously have family here and my uh, and business partners here. Our firm is supported by a U.S.-based firm as well. So come back every quarter for us to have meetings here to talk about what's happening, uh, assessment of the company and the market. So uh, for the majority of the time, I'm, I'm back home in, in Liberia on the ground. You might be on mute. All right, that's, that's a good, go ahead. With DJ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. That is that is very impressive. Now let's talk about the dollars and cents, right? Let's talk about money. Let's talk about competition. Okay. Um, tell me, mortgage Liberia for Liberians versus Liberians in the diaspora compared to maybe Ghana. What are some of the things that you have encountered when you're looking at the uh, financial market to to get this work going? Well, I, I would say that is one of the largest challenges. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, I would say that's one of the largest challenges when it comes to to construction um, in, in Liberia. Uh, you realize that uh, most of the smaller construction firms in Liberia don't grow very well because there's a sustainability issue. They can't scale and they can't grow. Um, you'll have, um, you know, you'll have someone who, is, is struggling to build their house and, you know, will say, hey, thank Think BJ is freezing right there? Yeah, he's freezing a little bit. Um, but, oh, he's you back. know, this person is using up their savings in order to be able to build this. Um, all right, so the, the, the market, the financial market in Liberia for your banking system is um, the mortgage market and the, the debt market is very, very difficult. Um, you're looking at 15 to 20 percent interest rates if you're going to go in and borrow. If you want to get a construction loan in Liberia, um, that's just ridiculous. And you start paying back as soon as tomorrow um, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're looking to borrow in Liberia. So on top of that, you need to have some type of collateral in Liberia. So if you don't have collateral that the bank deems worthy enough for them to be able to take the risk to give you that loan, um, you know, you're, you're on your own. So a lot of people spend their lives, whether they're in the diaspora um, or they're in Liberia, they spend, a, they spend a long time if they're not liquid enough uh, to have that cash to say, I'm, I want to build my house within six to eight months or whatever the case may be, to give it to a developer like ourselves to go and build it uh, in a timely, timely fashion. So um, I, I think it would be a huge help if there was support from the financial market if there are more commercial lending institutions that were able to give longer term loans to allow people to be able to borrow for construction or for mortgage based systems as well. But that's a, that's a huge challenge and a struggle right now for a lot. Well, ladies okay. and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is FOL Marketplace, where we discuss business, economic and finance. Our topic today is the business of real estate in Liberia. Our guest, Mr. Wakai Meime of Kaikana, and Mr. Blije Ines of Business Developer Real Estate, a business developer right there in Liberia. And if you want to join the conversation, you see the uh, number is on the screen. That's 605-313-6004. Our code is 791403. Call that. Even when they charge you one cent per minute, you can pay that one cent and be part of the conversation. Back to you, William. Uh, thank you. So, uh, are you uh, telling me right now that uh, if a Liberian, uh, guys, this is, let me just chime in here. So, we're looking at competition and we're looking at the ability and the justification, making it easy for Liberians to want to be partakers or to build and, and be in Liberia. So, clearly, we see that there's a deep love of us Liberians to have a passion because it's it's uh, very challenging. Now, when I, when I when I look at this market compared to Ghana market, where Ghana right now has a, a mortgage system for the Ghanaians in um in um diaspora. Now, not only do they have that, but anybody, if you are a foreigner, you can own a home and own the um the um land that you have. And then the quality of the home is there. So there's a triple threat uh, that we are going against. Um, how do you feel about that? Or when you, when, when you go out there and you're trying to move the needle in Liberia where they say, bring a hundred grand cash, brother. 
Yeah, uh, like uh, like Bridget said, Sarah, it's an interesting problem. And I think for me, again, it goes back to infrastructure and systems. And, you know, if, if you have a central bank or a bank in Liberia or any institution in Liberia, a lending institution, how are they going to get data on their customers to know that this person is trustworthy of my money? Like, it's difficult. You can't get credit reports. You, you, you can barely get any information. You, we need systems to, to, to you know, keep track of what is going on, how we are lending, and definitely we know we need the money power. Now, talking about the real estate market and people you know, trying to buy in Liberia, it's true. Uh, I've had the experience, a lot of people will call and say, do you guys do uh, uh, a payment plan? Can I, can I buy this house, but pay within two, two years? Can I pay a buy a fifty thousand dollars house or a hundred thousand dollars house and pay in two, three, four, five installments? Most of the property owners will say no because it's a cash based system. It's a cash based yeah. economy. You, you go get the money and dump it on me. If you don't have it, then don't come. You know, so so it's very very difficult. And most people in Liberia wouldn't just have fifty thousand or a hundred thousand United States dollars stored up, or even people in the U.S. that are from Liberia that want to go back to Liberia. And even to be honest, if you do have that money, it's difficult to see what is available. And most times when you see what is available, it's, it's not very appealing to you for the money that you're looking for. Because the, 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 the construction that is done is not probably up to par with what you used to, or what you know, and it, it's something seem off. So that, that's kind of where I had the idea in the first place of saying, you know what? I was going to Liberia looking to buy a land after school, trying to buy a property. There was not one you know, real good presentable website that will show me a pool of properties that I can just search from. I was like, this has to be that something has to be done. Like I, I have a computer science background, so, you know, I can at least do a company, put a website up and do something like that. But those things need to change. Like there needs to be a system where you can either find properties, where you can, you know, go and get lending, you know, where the central bank is going to be able to figure out, okay, this person makes a certain amount of money. They, they show that they can pay this amount of uh, bill over time so we can trust them to give them money. But I, I think a lot of companies in the US or even Liberia don't even have the data to say, how do I know you? How do I know you're gonna pay me back? They don't know, it's a big risk. Hmm. Thank you very I, much. I was, I was just curious about that. With your IT background, how you got in this uh, real estate, what attracted you? And uh, after that, we're gonna open our phone lines and uh, let our callers call in. Yeah. Wakai, IT, sure. real estate, how you got there? So, so uh, my, my brother actually uh, went to, to finish a real estate development program. So he's a certified uh, real estate developer. And again, when I went back to Liberia uh, with, a, with a background in, in IT and, and computer science, uh, I, I, I wanted to find a property. And I think at that time, the only thing I could see was TLC Africa or something like that. And there was not really a lot of properties to see. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That, Everywhere in Liberia, in Ghana, other places, you can you can stay far away in this day and age with uh, technology overtake, overtaking the world. There has to be some way I can stay in in the U.S. and see what is available to buy in Liberia. If we're not doing that, then people in other parts of the world, other parts of Africa, are going to be taking that business. So um, you know, I, I originally it was not supposed to even be for money. I just wanted to do that as a project. But then I was like, you know what? All, all, there are a lot of real estate lovers in my family. People started to push. We came together and we were like, you know what? We're going to make this big. We're going to make it real. So we, we did the real estate website, put the company together, register it, you know, put the website up. And you can actually now sit in the US or anywhere in the world and look at what is available in Syncor and actually stay in here in, in the US, pay for a property in Liberia. And when you get there, it's going to be ready for you to go in. Oh, wow. uh, you know, you can pay with your credit card. Or you can pay with PayPal, or you can you can do any of that from anywhere in the world. We need more of those kind of things, not yeah, just definitely. for the real estate side, but from the lending side. So, Bleejee, have you completed some projects in Liberia, and are you also expanding in the other counties? I'm sure you want to have something near in Bikuna or so. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, this this marks the official end of our uh, of our first year uh, in Liberia. Um, you know, the, the first half of the year for as a, you know, as a company for us was really 
understanding the market and where we wanted to focus our attention um, in Liberia. Like the, the construction services segment has so many different aspects. You have people in Liberia who are undergoing projects currently, but somebody is stealing their money and they don't trust the contractor and they don't have somebody who is educated or skilled enough to do proper supervision. Um, so, you know, we offer those services of project management and, and, and supervision and quality control on site as well. You have other people who just abandon their projects in Liberia completely because they got so frustrated with no integrity um, and, and a lack of quality from the contractors that they were using. So um, we had some projects that we picked up um, this past year that people had already started and uh, we were finishing up some residential projects for people. We did some landscaping projects as well. Um, we have some projects that we're coming on and doing construction management and project management for um, as well. And then um, going into this year, we have some other larger developments um, that, that potential clients have reached out to us about that we're in the process of, of doing design and some quality control. Um, hopefully after COVID-19 is over, um, we will be able to get to work on some of those projects as well. Thank you. Let me bring in our first caller. Caller, your name and where you're calling from? Last four digits, 4752. Hello, caller, you are live. Hello? Hello? Your name and where you calling from? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is uh, Leon calling from Maryland. I've been following the discussion. Uh, just um, not not more or less a question, but just more or less. Uh, I'm just trying to assess what exactly, you know, or Blee J and and some of the other folks in the in real estate sector. What are they kind of doing to push the agenda forward, right? Because. We all know what the, the issues are, right? You know, lack of accountability in terms of, you know, the, the, the deeds uh, for lands and, you know, the, the system is broken down, there's no structure. I mean, what are you guys doing? For those of you who want to be in the real estate sector in Liberia, what are you doing to kind of move that agenda forward and say, you know, are you approaching any government officials? Hey, look, we need a you know, like, like a, like a deed system, you know, electronic in nature. Maybe have you signed on with a big company that kind of is driving this agenda? Um, you know, so what, what are you guys doing along that line to fix the problem? Because until we, I mean, we know the economy is bad, you know, 90% of people aren't employed. Uh, even if there were banks able to give loans, people don't have the money to pay those loans. Right. So the, the economy is bad. We know the system is bad. So, so how are you guys driving that agenda so that maybe two years from now, three years from now, you know, we're not still in the same boat. You know, maybe there's a company the government signs with to, you know, take control of all the registration of these across the country. Maybe they sign with a property management company to enforce zoning law, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But for those of you in the real estate sector, how exactly are you kind of moving that needle forward so we can see the systematic change we all have been looking for? Thank you. Thank, thank you, Liam. BJ, you want to take that first? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Leon, thank you for the question. Um, that's uh, a, a huge part of, um, of, I think, what a lot of our interest and our focus was, again, that we know that we can't really make the change that we really want to be able to make or the impact that we want to make as a construction firm saying that we want to come in and change the quality and, and, and the way the, the regular order of the day in Liberia without engaging the government and working along with them. Uh, some of the initial things that we've done on that side is is reaching out to people in public works and reaching out um, to other people in in government. One and and I've personally been engaging people about this whole urban planning concept. Um, when we look at Monrovia as a whole, Monrovia is tremendously overcrowded. Um, you have clients again who have disputes when they want to start construction, where people are complaining that they're building into into their land and things like that as well too. So. Um, we started to have those conversations and then able all to participants offer. are muted and they can unmute themselves. We, uh, we've, we've offered services of, of doing um, uh, pilot projects of urban planning for certain communities um, to, to people in government um, as well. And again, 
it's it's just this certain things that you can do and certain things that you can't control. We're having those conversations and we're hoping that those people are going to act on it. Um, on the financing side, I've been heavily engaging um, and working with a lot of the people in my network here in the U.S. Uh, when it comes to creating some type of platform, for, for, first for Liberians in the diaspora, some type of financial platform. Um, we've been talking to financial institutions here in the U.S. of saying, hey, is there a way that we can create some type of uh, a, a financing platform for Liberians here who are credit worthy, who are taxpayers, who have collateral here, if they're looking to do some type of project uh, in Liberia. We're, we're talking to local banks in Liberia and other institutions in Liberia as well of, of what this model would look like. Uh, hmm. So these conversations are, are being had and, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that we'll come to solutions and, you know, a year from now, we're not bumping our heads against the wall for some of these same problems and issues that we're, that we're just facing, just to name a few. Hmm. Waka, you want to add to that before I bring in my next caller? Sure. Uh, my reaction to that uh, really is, candidly, I think you can only do so much as an individual. And for me, uh, I think first, just even being able to have a system where people can search and find property, great. Uh, now we're in the process where we're working with the Ministry of Lands and Mines to say, we go there basically and say, hey, here's a deed. Can you verify it? Can we, can, you know, whatever we need to do to verify this, uh, this deed, we want to do that. Now, here's the, the, the honest truth is that I have been sitting on a panel before, I think it was 2016 in Liberia when I was working at Lift Echo. We, we had a conversation with the Ministry of Public Works. We were supposed to uh, build out a database where, you know, we will have all of the information that, can, that cannot only be shared with the public, but would be shared across all of the agencies, all of the government agencies. It was for different things, tracking cars, like the government cars and stuff like that. We went to that meeting three times, and after that, I didn't hear anything else. I asked, and nobody could give me any straight answer. So not to say there aren't people that can do these things. Um, I'm currently a consultant, and I, I have a, an extensive software engineering background. I, I, I'm able to come with a team of consultants, even from places like McKinsey or, or just a team of librarians who are talented to actually go and stand up a system that would do the tracking, that will, you know, create the data, put it online, do all these things. But until you have somebody who's first even willing to give you the audience or do something, it's not, it's, you know, it's very unlikely. And when you go to Liberia, people who left from Liberia came to the U.S. and went to school sometimes. When you go back, for me, you know, just working in the, at Leteco as an IT manager, people started to, you know, say all kinds of things. Like, oh, just because he's from America, so now he thinks he knows everything. We've been doing this thing like this for a long time. You know, what are you going to come and tell us? It's, 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 it's those kind of challenges, you know, it, it's, it's almost like we need to educate people about the importance of data and analytics and, and you know, systems and software. So I, I think it can get there. I think for me, I, we would need people to actually listen to, you know, what we have to say. And we would need them to be on board if they listen. We would need them to be on board to actually execute. Hmm. Let me bring in the next caller. And that is uh, Joe Moyo. Joe Moyo, you are live. Yes, sir. Uh, nice topic. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, look, with regard, you, you were asking about how to settle land disputes in, in Liberia. Uh, Mr. Miami is a uh, software specialist, I think, from what he said. Uh, both you and Mr. Ines are in the, in the business, you know, the real estate business. Uh, they should be the evangelist for blockchain technology in government as it relates to archiving, bringing trust into the process. So uh, I was a bit surprised that I, did, I didn't hear about how blockchain can be applied. And that would set up, that would set up the, uh, the problem of you know, people being dishonest in terms of, of land deals, introducing fraud into the process, that would take care of that. Hmm. So I, I was a little bit surprised that, you know, that was that mentioned because that could also be a side business for Mr. Uh, Mr. May. You know, yeah. he could get the government and that was, that was set up the whole concept of fraud in, in land tra transactions. Another thing is um, the country needs a business intermediary 
And that's another business opportunity. Say, for instance, if you go to the bank, they give you this high polluting interest because they can do it. They know very little about you. But if you have somebody in Liberia who decided that, hey, let me do some due diligence, set up my own credit check agency, and sell those services to, to the banks, the banks will be happy to buy it. The Thank banks you. will be very, very happy that they have you know, an intermediary in Liberia, somebody would set up a company, and their job is to be uh, is to be the middleman mm. between the bank and consumers in terms of lending, whether it's commercial lending or uh, you know uh, personal lending. They they will be happy. I mean, some years I, I remember speaking to uh, a banking friend, and he was like, "Nobody's thinking about that. Okay. Those are all opportunities." You Thank know, you, Joe. Blockchain, they're doing it in, in, in Rwanda, they're doing it in other African countries. It, it's not only land, but you put blockchain at the level of the bank, banking transaction and all that. And I'm sure Mr. Mamie, who's in the industry, the software industry, uh, understands uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, okay. I don't understand it, but let, we'll let uh, Mr. Call. Mamie uh, uh, comment on that. So, so. Uh, okay, thanks. That, that's a that's a uh, that's an interesting question. That's a great question. Uh, I think definitely blockchain can help. But my reaction to that will be, uh, think think of it as you're trying to do a race. Uh, you, you want to have a car race, but you have no track. It's it's impossible. You're going to crash. You're setting yourself up for for failure. It's we we have we don't even have the very basic systems, and we don't even have. Even just a regular database, like a like a like a Microsoft Access database, we can't maintain. Current is off all the time. The system is down. All of these things. How can you do blockchain? Like nobody is going to go to the bank. Nobody's going to get money from the bank. Nothing is going to happen. So this is not a. It's, it's that's, a, it's an a that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity that the IFT will be very very happy to help you with. Did you miss Believe our show? Did, did you make our well, well, did you miss our show? Maybe I think it was last week we talked about the technology challenges, and uh, now we're talking about the IFC. So I think that's a whole nother discussion about how long it takes to get money from the IFC. To be fair, uh, so so definitely to our caller, uh, that that road is is uh, very long, but definitely things to be noted. VJ, let's let's uh, come back to this focus, Dennis. We got some uh, comments. Yeah, there's a comment here from, uh, again, Cecilia who asks about you staying in Liberia. Say, you guys are giving us some good information on investment in Liberia. Luis Blope Caesar Jr. says, you pay 1.5% for real estate tax and again 10% on income generated from real estate. The rate of return on real estate investment is very low. And I want you guys to. Uh, Comment on that. He said, for example, if a residential property built for three thousand five hundred, no, for thirty-five thousand, you pay five hundred twenty-five, you know, interest, and you lay all that out. At the end of the day, your yearly taxes are higher than what you are generating as uh, your taking income. Cecilia said, the banking institutions in Liberia will charge a higher interest rate for loans. Tony K. Davis says how will you invest in a country when you are not going to get your money back so i know you spoke of the the challenges so speak briefly to those comments please you can go first yeah yeah all all good points um made especially on a, on a return on investment the roi um standpoint um, one of the things that I think is very, very important for people who are calling themselves investors and, and looking to build and develop in Liberia is that it's, it's very, very important for you to understand your, your financials and the finances, right? Due diligence and data is so important. And I think our people as a whole underestimate data. Um, you know, we, we go in and we think, hey, Jeb, you got to have this land somewhere that, yes, I should go ahead and build this apartment building or I should go ahead and do this. Um, and and for me, for example, you know, I'm, I'm used to putting together cash flow analysis for real estate development companies that if the numbers don't make sense for them and, and, and they lay it out for this is a, a five year, 10 year, 15 year hold or strategy for this building, 
if the numbers and the returns don't make sense, um, they find ways to cut the cost for the numbers to make sense, or they hold off on that project until the economy is better, or they sell off that land and find a, a different site in order to be able to build. So I think, again, I think it's very, very important for our people to, to do a lot of due diligence when it comes to the, the financial side. So, you know, even if you're not a financial expert, finding someone that you can reach out to and say, hey, can you help me build a cash flow analysis in, in Microsoft Excel that's going to project what my income is going to be, what my expenses are? Because a lot of times when we're doing these things in Liberia, people are, people are guessing. You know, you have all of these unexpected expenses that are coming up and miscellaneous things that are popping up that you're not taking into account into your investment strategy, uh, taxes and these different things. And then by the time it hits you, you're screwed and you never really build a buffer to protect yourself for it. Um, so again, I think just doing your due diligence in a market that's risky like Liberia is so important uh, in, in structuring it and reaching out to actual financial people to say, hey, my man, do you think this thing even makes sense for me to go ahead and do right now? How can I structure it differently so that I'm at least making a profit out of it until the market the market turns around? So I know it's, it's not easy investing in Liberia. is not for the faint of heart. But um, again, I think there's a, a huge need for our people to be able to, uh, to do their homework um, and to be able to reach out to people on the financial side and make sure that that investment is, is going to hold for that time period that they're looking to invest in. Let me bring in one more caller and then uh, yeah, Waka, call you can respond. Call out your name and where you're calling from. Hello, caller 6937, your last four digits. Hello? Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Look, me I call on the phone. Let me let you go. Let me talk to the people. All right, bye bye. Uh, Moses, I'm calling from New York. Welcome, Moses. How are you doing? Um, I'm fine. Um, I was just watching the program, actually. I just, you know, I just wanted to weigh in and ask the guys a few questions. Sure. And yeah, my question is uh, simple because um, you know in the U.S. they got a system that um, you actually go through the bank to get this loan so that you can be able to own a property over here. And they're all basically based on credit. How good is your credit and how good is your, uh, 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 your pay history? Let's just say your payment history. Mm -hmm. And but what I don't understand, first of all, let me, you know, let me, you know, you know, you know, let me commend these guys. You're doing a great job. You know, I'm proud. I'm a big fan. Uh, you know, I appreciate it. But the question is, if you guys got any system put in place to track progress like that, because like, you know, I understand we don't have nothing called credit cards, none of that. We don't have nothing called social security number. To where you can run somebody uh, social security number to know whether the cable or borrowing, uh, you know, borrowing up money mm -hmm. and paying it back. So what's this guy going to put him to try progress mm -hmm. in terms of what you guys trying to do? And my step, that's my first question. But the second, let me just give all two, and you can answer it. But sure. you know, it's not long. And then the second one is with our bank. Central Bank or whatever bank in Liberia, would they be willing to uh, go ahead and do business with the local people that live there in terms of housing and hearing people abroad that are trying to do business like that? That's my question. Thank you, Moses. Okay. DJ, let's, let's, let's give that one to our, to our BJ first. Because you, you've talked about trying to raise capital. Maybe for you've been into some banks in Liberia, you've enjoyed the cool air condition, but you came out frustrated. So, <laughs> so, so take a stab at that. So that was a, was a very loaded question. Uh, but uh, I think the, the first part of the question, boy, I can go back and answer that. Um, the, the second part of that question, when it comes to um, putting things in place to be able to support, um, you know, Liberians in the uh, in the diaspora when it comes to financing, uh, it's something again that I've I've it's 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 been something that I've been actively working at because I think it benefits me 
um, as a business person, as a developer, as much as it benefits our employees. And one of the things I've realized in Liberia is that you can go in and say, I want to do one thing. And then you realize that you need to, to find a way to create something else for your business or your system to be able to work. Um, so uh, again, for, for us, I know that, hey, as a, as a construction professional, my business will not succeed if I cannot find a way to help create financing or to find financing for my clients or to offer that as a service. That, that's something that creates an advantage for me as well. If, if I'm the only construction firm doing residential development or commercial development that can also offer an application process for my prospects to go through the, to find financing, that's, that's something that, that it's, it's predicated on my success as well. So um, again, I think there's, it's, it's a process, right? You know, um, a bank in Liberia, a bank in the U.S., for example, a financial institution in the U.S. cannot go after collateral in America. I mean, in Liberia, for instance. So if, I, if you take money from here, um, you know, and you negate on that loan, um, the banks or the financial institution here wants to make sure that they can get their money back in some way and they don't have jurisdiction to go after something in Liberia. So uh, we've been trying to look at linkages between um, U.S.-based firms that are operating in Liberia, for example, um, IB Bank is owned by a U.S. private equity firm. Um, we've engaged them and talked to them about creating a relationship. Um, since we have a U.S.-based company that supports us, of creating a relationship with their U.S. company and saying, okay, since you work in the Liberian market and you're familiar with the Liberian market, um, what are some of your concerns? How can we create this financial system and structure? And it's something that their parent company here in the U.S. is very, very interested in. And, uh, and, and we're working through some of those kinks and we're sitting down at the drawing board of trying to see how we can come up with that with some of those solutions as well. So again, it's, it's not something that happens overnight. Um, it's something maybe that we will even lay the foundation down and you know, some other brilliant entrepreneur will come after us um, and, and, and reap the, the fruits and the benefit of it. But you know, believe me, we are actively working towards some of these things and you know, um, we're, we're in it trying to, trying to make sense out of it because if we don't do it, no one else will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, let, me, let me take the first part of the question. And I think the simple answer to that is we, we can't do it. And the question I, I, I think was, how are we keeping track of you know, people transaction history, credit history to be able to say, yes, this person you know, probably have a good lending uh, credit history to you know, be able to give them loan or something like that. that. I think fundamentally, that's something that has to come from the central bank, from the government. That regulation has to happen. Um, and it's not just for real estate. It's not just for lending money out to people to, to, to do real estate, right? You, you, you need these institutions if, if you want to you know, uh, pay on cars, if, if you wanted to put a down payment on anything that you usually put a down payment on in countries like the US, UK, you know, fundamentally it all ties back into systems. And we can only do so much as a real estate company, but there has to be a way of you know, saying that we have a system to track credit history, to, to know our customers and say, this person, based on this information we have, you know, will be able to pay uh, their bill. And there are different things you can do for that. There's machine learning models. You can put in all the, uh, the person's personal data. It can predict if that person is going to be able to pay the money back or not. Uh, mm -hmm. and my reaction to the comments earlier, and I, I think you hit the nail on the head here, it's, it comes down to strategy. And the question was, uh, I think one of the questions uh, uh, was how can we, um, oh, you, you, you don't have a lot of return on investment. Uh, you basically spend your money and you can get it back. How do you in, uh, expect to invest? I think it's strategy. Uh, you have to know where to invest, uh, where to build the property, what kind of, what kind of demographic uh, graphics, uh, in the area, the socioeconomic, uh, makeup of the area before you can put something that they are very, very, I don't want to discourage uh, investors because they are very, very profitable real estate owners, property owners in Liberia. You would be very, very surprised that somebody is paying $4,000 up to six, $7,000 per month for a three bedroom apartment in Liberia. Or for some of wow. the high end costs you see over there, pe people are paying that money. Uh, I'm not going to call names. I'm not going to call places, but NGOs will pay for you know the 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 comfort of the people they're bringing. 
So you have to know where to buy it. If you, and for a regular, for an ordinary Liberian, I don't want to say regular, ordinary Liberian, we don't make that much to say we're going to take $100,000 cash and just buy a land in Sinkhole. That's, that's the hot spot. If, if, if expats are coming to the country, they want to go to Sinkhole or, or Mamba Point or, 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 or Congo Town. And to buy a land in that area now, you're probably talking fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000. And again, to, back to the point, there is no way you can get money from the bank to go and fund that. So you have to come out with all the $100,000. Mm. So most of our brothers and sisters are probably buying land out in Marshalls or Broadville or somewhere a little further. Mm. And they're putting like a two, three bedroom mm. property that is probably not mm. up to par with what an expat want to live in. So what does that leave you? Leave you with the ordinary Liberian who, if you say my, my rent is $500, they're going to come and say, you know what, I make a little less, so can I pay you 150 If you say no, they're probably going to go, and you're going to realize that I have to put this thing to 150 for me to get some money. So you lose it. So it's all strategy. Thank you. One, let's bring in our last caller, William. Thank you. Call out your name and where you call them from. 5158, last digit. Hello. Hello, this is Cecilia Hippie. Uh, <laughs> thank you for inviting me on this show. <laughs> this is a very interesting, you know, topic and, you know, discussion today. Uh, I know that the Liberian system is, as far as real estate is concerned, is broken down because I don't know how you guys can approach the, the government to put a system in place for us to be able to track uh, properties, owners, and so forth. Simple system as listing a property, putting it on an MLS system. I, I came on late because I don't know what you all do. I've heard of someone, you know, investor or a developer, but I have not seen a system where I can go and say, I'm looking for a property in St. Paul or Broadsville, whatever place for me to be able to see list of properties mm -hmm. that I can pick from. Some right. of us, Canada, I know the banking system is really, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to get, a, or to get a loan in Liberia. But if you live in America and you have equity in your property or you got some investment, you can get money from here and go to Liberia and be able to buy a loan. Or the banking system can do something where they, they, they can do like a, 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 a convention loan where you can put a 20% or 30% down. Hmm. The system is so bad that some of us, we are afraid to invest in Liberia. I know some people are taking risks to do whatever. Because we live in America, we know what systems are here we don't want to invest in Liberia. Somebody buying a property and someone selling it two or three times, it's, it's, it's hard. When you work all your life and you want to retire, I'd rather take my money and go to a country and, you know, a different country and buy a property over there. How can you guys approach the government to make it a little bit easier for some of us that are worried about our investment? That's what I would like to know because I don't know the, the four of you guys on the panel, I don't know what all of you guys do, but I've heard different things. Right. So what and, can you guys do if you can Cecilia, answer my question? Cecilia, for full disclosure, you can tell us too that you have a real estate background, right? Yes, I do have a real estate background and I do, I mean, I'm a private investor. Everywhere I go, I have invested in property and that, you know, investing in property have been a very good thing for me over the years, over 20 some more years in America, in different states and different places. But when I look at Liberia, I'm too afraid. I'm too afraid to even trust anybody to work right. with. I don't have to live over there. When I asked the question earlier, you, you, I said, where do you guys live? It was not so much about being in Liberia, but the information that you guys were given, it was very helpful. I'm like, well, are they in Liberia or are they here? You can be here and still learn a lot about it. The, the, the real yeah. estate over there, but I've, I've chosen not to learn anything about the real estate from what I've been getting here from people. Thank you. Uh, why can't you take I, that? Can, can yeah, I, I can respond to that. 
So yeah. I, I, I was like Cecilia, right? Where I'm going back to Liberia and I'm interested in properties and I look online and there was nothing. But Cecilia, I want you to go to kaikana.com, K-A-I-K-A-N-A.com. You should see a list of properties. You can search for Sinkor, Broville, whatever. You should find properties. And um, if you're interested in buying properties and investing, we do the same. We even manage properties. So there are some people in the UK, in the US that have properties. In Liberia, they don't trust the people that live in Liberia to manage it for them or family members. So they call on us. We we manage the property fully and uh, we do everything from collecting rent to fixing things that are broken in the house. So we do do that. I think the fundamental problem we're talking about is what you just mentioned. How, how do we know that we can trust the system to go and say we can get a loan from the bank? And I think to your point, that's, that's the very few fortunate people who are here who have properties and go and sell up of their property and have that equity in hand or cash. That's the only way you can go to Liberia and say, let me buy a decent home. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to because it's just very difficult to get a loan from the bank. So I think the, 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 what I'm hearing a lot is maybe we need to do more as a group of people to go and talk to the government of Liberia and say, hey, we need to build a system here. And it, I, I think the system is going to be a foundation, not just for real estate, but for everything else that could use some lending power. Uh, yeah. if, if you can give uh, uh, entrepreneurs, market people, some form of funding that they can pay back, a lot of things can happen. Like the economy can explode, you know? Yeah. But we just don't have that. And we, we, we need the right audiences for me. We need the right audiences to talk to them, to present these ideas, and they need to be open to it, to working with us, to you know, making something work. But we know there are people out there, we've gotten a call so many times, that are willing to invest in Liberia. It's just coming up with the lump sum at one time is difficult. Hmm. Are you guys extending out of like uh, Morovia because I want something in Sino? So we've, so we've been getting a lot of calls actually about uh, Maryland recently and we do want to expand, but again, it's, it's, it's all infrastructure. We, you, you get one call for Sino in, in the whole, maybe uh, uh, regularly, maybe the whole month or you know, two, three months. So for you to go and set up a whole office in Sino, you, strategically, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So usually when we get something like that, if we get enough calls, we we'll send somebody to Sino and you know, go and do the groundwork. But you know, that's what I'm saying. If, if, if we can have some kind of financial institution that will be willing to, to put the money in the hands of people that are willing to invest, then we'll say, okay, you know what? It's been so many people calling about all these different places. We're going to stand up offices in all the 15 counties. That's really our goal. We want to make sure we can reach all of the, and we do do that right now. It's just not very, it's not as good as it is in Monserrato. We can find your property in Monserrato in, in the blink of an eye, Sano, it's probably going to take a while. All right, bombing or uh, Nimba, Cape Mambo. William, back to you as we try to wind down. Thank you, Cecilia, for your question. Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Dennis. And to all our viewers, once again, this is Focus on Liberia, the marketplace where we talk about things business. And uh, we are on this Saturday. We've been uh, very blessed to have Bokai and uh, Lee J join us. Uh, we're so thankful for you coming. Um, so something I want to say, uh, but I think I'll save it for my um, closing. I'll keep it within 45 seconds. So I'll give it back to the uh, gentlemen who have been uh, gracing us with their presence because they are our guests for some closing remarks. And if there's any piece that we, we didn't ask you, we didn't cover, uh, you can, you can uh, come up with that. Let's start with Lijay. Well, um, I mean, I, I think we covered, you know, this is a very, very deep conversation that can, like most conversations surrounding Liberia, that can go on and on and on and on. But um, I mean, I think having a conversation is, is an important thing. And um, and I think, you know, this is a dialogue probably I need to reach out to more guy and we need to chat. I've been talking to some other real estate professionals of us possibly having some type of real estate conference um, in Liberia where we invite government officials and other people who are our uh, key stakeholders in the in the market as well for us to talk about some of these problems to actually all sit down and engage on some active solutions to move forward with. Um, but um, again, just want to thank you guys uh, for the opportunity to be on the platform. 
Um, the reason, one of the key reasons that I went back home to to engage in this company, to start this company again, was with the, the frustration that I had with the market of, of going home and seeing substandard construction being done, um, a lack of education, a lack of safety for people working on site, um, a lack of integrity uh, for contractors in Liberia who don't do what they say they're going to do. And all of these different issues urge me to, to say that I want to go back home and see a difference. So. Um, again, for anyone who is looking to do any type of construction in Liberia, um, you know, we have a U.S. based company where you can make payments to here in the U.S. as well as our headquarters being in Liberia. Um, and, um, you know, just all of the things to take away the headaches that are, that are associated with building in Liberia and, and doing construction in Liberia. We're hoping to take some of those things away and to bring a new standard of quality in design and building and integrity um, into Liberia. And again, we're we're growing as a, as a young company and, you know, your feedback and your suggestions as, as people out there who are listening is, is important to us as young guys who are looking to grow our companies and in the, in the footprint that we're trying to create. So again, thank you all to all the callers and, and, and the hosts for this show and, and to Borka as well too. It gives me a lot to think about. I'm excited about the future of real estate in Liberia because I think Liberia is one of the last frontiers when it comes to investing in, in West Africa. So all of these problems that we're discussing actually pose huge opportunities for people um, yeah. in different sectors. You know, there's different things that he, that Borkai needs in his business to support him. And it's an opportunity for investors and okay. entrepreneurs to step in and create solutions and help us in this, in this journey as well. Hmm. And, and Blige, how can someone reach you who's interested in what you do? Well, we are on uh, our website is, is www.trybuchanan, B-U-C-H-A-N-A-N, all one word, trybuchanan.com. We're on Instagram as well, uh, at trybuchanan on Instagram. And then we have a Facebook page. If you type in trybuchanan, um, separate words, T-R-I Buchanan Development on Facebook, you'll see our Facebook page. You'll see some of the work that we're doing, some of the work that we've done. Um, we're also doing some projects in some nearby countries as well, in Ghana, um, in Sierra Leone, where we're looking to expand in the market. So uh, we're doing projects in other countries as well as trying to bring some of that quality in Liberia. So um, and people can also reach out to me on my personal page. Um, I'm, I'm always very active in responding to people who, are, who have questions or are looking to, to engage in anything back home. Thank you, Blee J. One thing to uh, keep in mind, please, uh, if you are not, you know, if you're on Facebook, please uh, request focus on Liberia. There's the video, there are comments. Uh, okay. Some folks have, have questions, please feel free to, to answer the questions uh, and so forth and uh, reach out to them. The same for you, Bokai. Go ahead. Cool. Uh, so uh, to start off, I, I, I want to say thanks to, you know, everyone listening right now to today's show and to the organizers. I think this is a great platform. You know, this is a very, very great, uh, amazing discussion we're having right now. And two reactions, I, I think two takeaway for me is uh, one, like you said, Blige, is to connect with few people, right? And, and, and I've been, I guess, kind of governized now to take the conversation a little bit more to the government and not relent, you know? Say, hey, this is what we need to do, we need to do it. If you keep going and be persistent, something is going to happen. So that is the takeaway for me, that's why I'm going to work on. I've done it all my life, we did it in high school, in college, that's why we're here. So we can do that with the government, take it on to them. Uh, for people listening right now, everyone in the audience, um, I'd like to say, if you had similar problem like me, that's, that's what I had before I started the business, like Cecilia, go on to kaikana.com, K-A-I-K-A-N-A.com. You can find real estate properties. We have an office on 17th Street, Syncor. Uh, we have a Facebook page, search Kaikana app. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, uh, we're around. In the, US, you can, in the US, you can call us on 470-223-8671. In Liberia, you can call us on uh, 770-617. Uh, seven six nine. Um, so we do everything from helping you to find an office, uh, a residential space, or rent, or to buy a land. Uh, anything that has to do with real estate, property management. Uh, if you have a house in Liberia, two three, you don't trust your family members, we can take care of it for you so that you don't have to be mad at them. Um, so, so yeah. 
<laughs> so so yeah yeah we 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 do that and I, I I'm excited to be you know here on the show having this platform and and um, and uh, I look forward to you know having a a successful uh, impact in Liberia I, I'm all pro Liberian I want to you know move back and take over full time but we need some of these infrastructures to get in place so. Uh, secondly, if anyone listening knows anyone in the government, I'm not just into real estate. My, my main background is uh, computer science. I'm a consultant right now, and I, I'm heavy in the real estate industry. All of my projects right now I do is how we use computer science, machine learning, AI, to solve real estate problems. There are people out there who are able to put in all the data from all of the tenants that they get from the market, from the socio-demographic information they get, like population density, like the income level. And they can tell you very, very accurately, if you put a property here based on the, on the machine learning model, you are going to be able to raise this amount of money at this time, based on the market, 100%. I have that background, I have that experience. Just, in fact, putting a property online, getting the deed and making sure somebody can search, like, a, like an MLS in the US, it's easy to do, but we need the right audiences. So if you know somebody in the government who we can talk to, who I can talk to, please reach out to me, please refer me. Uh, I'll be willing to talk to them. I'll be willing to draft a proposal, do whatever we need to do. But if we lay the foundation, this is not only going to be for real estate. It will, it will actually improve the economy in a lot of different sectors. You can reach me uh, on, my, on the website or you can send me an email address. Boakai, B-O-A-K-A-I, dot mamey, M-A-M-E-Y, at kakana.com, K-A-I-K-A-N-A.com. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. William. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We are here focused on Liberia. The goal is to promote, educate, elevate all things Liberia. And so uh, we're very happy, very elated uh, to have uh, two folks in real estate, professionals. You've heard from them. Uh, we just want to say thank you for joining us and also look at Focus on Liberia as a platform for you to come back. And if you want to broaden a discussion, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with, with anything particular, please, uh, we encourage you to use us uh, as a media platform uh, because uh, this is where Liberians tune in. And then also we put this on YouTube for those who are not able to, um, to uh, make it as well. So thanks to uh, everyone, Dennis, I give it back to you. Please let us know what we got coming up on Focus on Liberia. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. We really appreciate it. I'm very much amazed. You know, young people came from Liberia, one from six year old, and he's willing to go back and do this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm very, very much impressed. And uh, we'll be glad to have you back uh, as time goes by to see, to check on progress. And uh, Boaka, if you get that or uh, AI machine learning and uh, that tracking system, please come back and promote it. In fact, we have a group of technology guys. We have two shows now, and we're going to be doing something, you know, all the time from you guys. Please feel free to come back. Any fresh information or any advances that you've made, both of you, please uh, get in contact with us, and we come back here to talk about it. Be very much interested in what you do. I want to thank you so very much for your time. I want to thank our viewers and all those who call in, those who commented. Again, go back and uh, look at the video and share with friends and let make this viral. Uh, tomorrow at two, we're going to be hosting uh, the press deputy press secretary, Mr. Smith Toby, on the show right here to talk about Liberia, of course. And then uh, at six, we're going to be speaking to a young uh, Liberia and other ladies on sexual based uh sexual and gender based violence in liberia and what they are the general ministry can do to help so we're going to be discussing all that tomorrow until then from me to you i say thank you so much for watching uh enjoy your weekend again let us be reminded covid 19 is real please follow the protocol do everything that you can to prevent it where do all the things that are required so that either you don't contact it or give it to somebody else. Until then, my name is Dennis Ja on behalf of Focus on Liberia saying good day, enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are Liberia. Liberia is our home.